you made a decision in the last episode and little did you guys know it was going to be a massive one. My father, who was my agent just a year or so ago, decided to leave me after my career seemed to be going downhill. And now that I signed for Chelsea and I'm doing very well for myself, well, my father wants to represent me again. So he flew in on his helicopter, landed in our backyard, and he said, son, I'm sorry, I was wrong. Take me back. You guys said, no. You said we shouldn't take it. You said he just wanted me now because I have the fame, I have the money. So that's exactly what I told him. He wanted to stay here. He wanted to stay in London and be my manager. But instead, I sent him away. And little did I know that this decision right here was a decision that was going to change my life forever. And we moved to a familiar place. You remember this in episode two? If I would have said yes, he would have stayed. But I said no, and I sent him away. And on the way back, my father got in a bit of an accident. The helicopter went down, and me and my brother received my call just a few hours after he had left. And I was absolutely stunned. My heart sank. We didn't have the best relationship ever. But it, it was my father. We got the news that they'd recovered the helicopter. They sent him in an ambulance straight to the hospital. He was still alive, but no response. He wasn't speaking. He was breathing, but that was about it. There was hope. So of course, me and my brother got in the car straight away, sped to the hospital where we waited all night to see if anything would happen. And I sat there for hours upon hours. It felt like an eternity. Thinking about all the times I had with my father when I was a kid growing up, you know, it wasn't the best relationship. I didn't always get to see him a lot when I was a kid, and maybe I resented him from that. But he was my father, and the times I did spend with him, I cherished. We continued to grow apart, and I figured that when me and my brother became pros and my father did become my agent at the beginning of my career, this was gonna be a moment to reunite us. But as we separated and I figured out that he was just in it for the money, not to have a relationship with me, that was the time that we had to go our separate ways. You know, I have a bit of a regret. Should I have said yes to him becoming my agent? Should I have said no? I did what I had to do, and now we wait. Will I ever get to see or speak to my father again? Will he make it? Only time will tell. The season rolled on and I waited day in and day out, man. My father's still in the hospital, in a coma, unable to speak to anyone. He was still alive, but not a word to be said. Would he make it? Would he not? Again, only time would tell. We, however, had to continue playing. And don't get me wrong, it was very, very difficult. All these important Champions League matches, even with everything going on, my brother and myself made it to the pitch day in and day out to play. And that would be continuing as the year would progress. You know, in signing this contract for Chelsea, we had to fulfill our duties and I think it's what our father would have 100% wanted us to do. And who knows? He may end up being okay, but the doctors, yeah, they informed us it was very unlikely. We continued to wait, but until then, we had to play for him and we had to go out there and do it. Game one of this episode is against my former team, Chelsea taking the pitch. All these games being played for our father. So yes, when the kickoff takes place, we got to get the energy up and we got to get going here, boys. We are a Premier League player. We're vying for that Premier League title, the Champions League title, everything. We got to leave everything off the pitch that's happening off the pitch and I get my game in the right mindset. Let's get into this one, boys. What a crazy start to this episode. Things are just going to get even more crazy. And I'm telling you, I think some of you may think you know where this is going and this storyline is going but I don't think you actually do. 
it's gonna get even more crazy as time progresses and look at that through ball boys chill well what a goal we get the assist and it's one nil to start this game come on boys against my former club it does hurt i'm not gonna lie man nottingham forest was a great club for us last year it does hurt i feel a little bit of pain in scoring that one and a little bit of a celebration if i would have scored there trust me i would not have celebrated i'm a better player than that one nil at the halftime break boys only one nil hey man come on it's nottingham here we go can we get one against my former club right here in the box terrible skill move absolutely brutal skill move and that would be the end of the match a very quick one man i didn't want to punish my former club too hard but that's kind of just the way things have been going lately myself and my brother we've been a little off kilter as of late trying to get back into our normal form after what happened and speaking of just feeling a little bit off it's kind of the way it's been for me as of late and not just because of what happened with my father but the injury that i sustained at the end of last season that to this day really no one but a few people know about it's thrown me off and even though the doctor had told me that he thought everything was okay for me I, I, i've just been off my game and when i'm training when i'm in the match i feel tired at points where i shouldn't feel tired as a young football player i've been debating whether to go back and visit the doctor to maybe get some further tests but i, I haven't really felt the need i don't want anything to be wrong so as of late i've just been avoiding it and that's probably not the smartest move and even though i'm off kilter guess what's happening man other teams are seeing my playing ability and they want me i actually received a transfer offer for barcelona 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 of course i'm not accepting that you thought i was gonna accept that boys never i'm here with my bro at chelsea i'm as happy as i could be especially after what went down man it's good to be with family at a time like this so we're staying with chelsea and we're rocking with them there's no need to leave especially in the january window and after the january window ended it's in to the champions league round of 16 psg here we go boys into the match we go where this end of the season could get crazy champions league premier league what is going to happen boys i might keep saying it you don't know what's gonna happen and you will not guess what is going to happen the series is slowly but surely heading to an end we gotta hit 10,000 likes on this one you guys know the joke the next one to happen next week there are only a few episodes left in this series before it comes to the ultimate grand finale it's ending very soon so I smack a like if you guys are pumped I'm really happy with how this series has been the support has been growing and I have bigger and better plans ahead man all this series has been great with the new mod player features coming for FIFA 22 oh man the FIFA 22 mod player is gonna be absolutely wild let's get into this one boys PSG Chelsea round of 16 oh my goodness what a start that could have been in the 17th minute Jordan Jarvis puts it on target but that's actually a great save from the PSG keeper and speaking of PSG right here through ball this isn't gonna be an easy one by any means man here in France on the biggest stage my first time ever in the Champions League knockout rounds I played in the Champions League before with Bayern Munich but we got grouped and now we've made it through with Chelsea and oh man we're playing the biggest and best clubs in the world and I'm a little shaken right here Neymarzito or no, was that even Neymar Zito? I believe it was Cunha who makes it 1-0 right there. Look at him, man. Oh, that's a great finish. And man, we got some work to do, man. We knew we would have to. PSG is a club that isn't to be dealt with that easily. And they would have another opportunity right here. Kovacic in. Back to Cunha. Look at this, man. Going for goal yet again. This is a tough one. Especially since I've, I've never really had a matchup like this before against players like Cunha. Neymar. Kylian Mbappe out here 45 minutes down and we are falling behind 1-0 but it wouldn't be long boys in the 57th minute Jordi Jervis what a header man I don't know what it's been lately I think it's been me and my bro that connection he's just been flying down the wing sending me the absolute perfect passes and I'm just finding them with my head I feel like lately that's the only way we can score the freaking ball that one is a bit of a beauty put on a platter look at this you look at the connection it's all it is man the connection right there calling for the ball and it's nearly a diving header but it was just it's just perfect genuinely you could not place a ball better than that 
and it's 1-1. It's an equalizer, and more importantly, it is an away goal scored in Paris that could end up being crucial because we still got two legs to play here, man. Absolute madness. Here we go. Back into it. Could this be two? How is it not? How is it not genuinely? What even is that, man? How are you saving that ball right there? Who is the PSG keeper? There's no way it's still Kaylor Navas, is it? It's not Donnarumma. He's not in the game yet. No, it is actually Kaylor Navas. Don't worry, boys, because we would do this. Thought it was going to be a game winner, and it wasn't. Kaylor Navas is literally, I don't even know, man. He's preventing me from doing everything, but we would get that game winner. Oh, my God. 90th minute. It doesn't come from myself, but it's my bro. Oh, my God unbelievable genuinely just unbelievable here on the road being able to do this score two away goals i mean that should seal the deal man two away goals here in paris and we you're telling me we get to go back to london with two away goals um yo can we just write our spot in the next round right now i don't even think we need to play this next leg and it's just the jarvis brothers doing it with their heads it's absolutely incredible that's a great finish and we're, we're, we're being sent back to London, man, with a bit of a treat right here. Unreal. Unfreaking real. We're doing it out here for our pops, man. He's still struggling. He's still in a coma in the hospital. We're visiting him pretty much every single chance we get. And it's, it's tough. Leaving him behind and having to go out here and play. But somehow, someway, we're able to do it. Yet another win. So it's just the normal day, man. Like I said, me and my brother like to go visit my dad. Even though he can't speak, he's not awake, he's in a coma. We like to visit him every single day, every single chance we get in the hospital. And it was one day that I went in and I decided, you know what, let's get this checked out. I haven't been feeling the best, so I decided to visit a doctor. Obviously, he knew about my whole situation from before and he said he would run some extensive tests. He would try, get a few x-rays, see, if there was actually anything wrong he didn't believe there was everything was looking normal to him but he ran the tests and he told me that he was going to be able to get them back within a few weeks again he saw me and said i was the most healthy person he may have ever seen obviously i'm out here scoring goals in the champions league so what could be wrong what possibly could be wrong after hearing that i wasn't worried at all but the doctor would get back to hear we would have to say in a few days it was worth it right let's just go see what's wrong i'm already at the hospital i'm already visiting my dad so we may as well into the next match man why are we even playing this there's no reason to be playing this game we have two away goals we're not losing two away goals for us is huge like we have to concede so many and i just can't see it happening especially with the team that we have but we gotta play it we gotta go and uh yo yo what is that i hear is that the dramatic music playing in the background? Yo, that can never be good for a video, especially, you know, when that's on, something is about to happen. Something dramatic is about to happen, and is this actually going to end up being a close game? PSG gets the first, and they they get the second, and you guys remember when I was hyped about two away goals? Well, now within 17 minutes of this game, PSG have two away goals, and Mbappe is out here celebrating on us and we're behind and how is this one not in how is that one not in the luck is not on our side this game two to three in this one we would get one though oh the dramatic music still going though you know that oh, this game's only 42 minutes in but there is a long way to go before that final whistle the backflip i'm feeling confident out here what can i say man is three three on aggregate in its level away goals mean nothing right now except if we concede the next because if we concede the next like, that could have been right there. PSG now have three away goals, and everything becomes irrelevant. So, we got 45 minutes left to do it here in front of our home crowd, Stanford Bridge. 4-3. 4-3 in the fourth away goal, right there. It is in, and we are in trouble. 69th minute. Even if this one goes in, man, we got to score two more. And of course it's missed, of course it's a save, man. I'm trying everything I can do out here right now. Even this right here, that header doesn't go in, but the rebound does, and it's 4-4. I don't know what my teammate's doing going on and celebrating. I don't, I don't know if he thinks that it's actually equalized. We need another. And now with that, I think our dreams have just been crushed. 
on aggregate and to make it even worse this celebration right here bsg have just done it they've just knocked us out of the champions league in front of our home crowd putting up yes that's right four goals you heard that right four we just got absolutely embarrassed and there is no excuses for a loss like this Kylian Mbappe, Neymar, although that celebration may have been a bit dirty, they deserved every minute of it because that was just an honest obliteration. Chelsea, the season may be over in the Champions League. We got a chance at some other trophies, but that could be one of the most devastating losses of my career. Um, yo... Why are we at the end of the season already? I mean, we lost the Champions League, but um, is, is everything really over? Yes, you are seeing this correctly. The season is over after that match. FA Cup, over. Man City with the win. Team of the tournament, we made it. But we didn't finish the season. Chelsea did. I didn't. And you're going to see why that is in just one second. Here are all the stats, everything that you guys need to see. Obviously, we didn't win the Champions League. Napoli, of all clubs, was the one to do it right here. And the rest of your results in the Champions League, Europa League. But back to the storyline. Why are we skipping to the end? What happened to Jordan and his father? Here it is. It was after that second PSG game that my brother and I got a call. My father was awake. He was alive. He had awoken from the coma. We immediately got there. And there he was, man. I greeted my father and I, I couldn't be more happy. We didn't have the best relationship, but just seeing him there all right was genuinely a dream come true. And I couldn't be more happy. I was ready to start a new relationship with him and get everything hopefully back the way it was when I was a kid. I was until I, I saw the doctor standing over because he wanted a word with me. The results had come back. The doctor looked me dead in the eye and broke it to me straight. They'd found something so rare, a disease they'd never seen before. He looked me in the eye and said, Jordan, I'm sorry, son, but I think you may only have one year left to live.